everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. Today, I have a tutorial and pattern on this dress right here. A couple weeks ago, I posted the video of me making my graduation dress very last minute. It's actually right here, I think. Yeah. Here's the dress I made for graduation. As you can see, it's basically the same thing. You guys loved it. I made this out of a stretch satin fabric. The one I made today is out of a non-stretch linen fabric. But like I said, you guys really liked it and you really wanted a pattern. So here we are today. I have the pattern. And by the way, that pattern is the first link down below if you wanna go ahead and purchase it. And if you're actually interested in seeing the whole process of how I kind of sketched, designed, patterned, my original graduation dress. I will also link that video down below so you can see that whole process. But today I have a really in-depth tutorial and pattern so that you guys can create this dress for yourself very easily. And I just wanna put this out there really quickly. If you do purchase the pattern, make sure you do read the instruction pamphlet. I feel like a lot of people just kinda of gloss over it. And there's a lot of good information in there on assembly, seam allowance, fabric, measurements, all of that. So do make sure you read the instruction pamphlet. But if you do wanna learn how to create this gorgeous dress that is perfect for the summer, just keep watching. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is of course print your pattern. And when you do print it, make sure you print it out at 100% scale, that is the most important thing. If you have borderless printing, great, but if you don't, that's fine. Just make sure that you do not overlap your sheets of paper or trim it down. Just place them side by side and match up all of the diamonds and then tape it together. Once your patterns are taped together, you wanna to choose your size and then cut on the corresponding line. Make sure you do read the instruction pamphlet and don't just guess what your size is. Check out the measurements and size charts. I'm choosing to cut out a US size four. If I was using stretch fabric, I would go with a size two, but since I'm using woven fabric, I'm going to choose a size four. After you have all of your pattern pieces cut out, grab your fabric and start laying out your pattern pieces. Make sure you do also check the suggested cutting layout that I have provided for you in the instruction pamphlet, and then just cut out all your pattern pieces. And don't forget to notch at any of the points where you see a little triangle indicating that you should make a little clip with your scissors for a notch. So now we're ready to start sewing. I'm gonna start with the bodice and I'm going to sew all of the vertical seam lines. And when you do sew this, make sure you pay attention to the notches at the apex of the bust. After you sew all of those vertical seam lines, I'm going to bring it over to my serger and just serge everything. You don't have to use a serger. You can choose to finish your seams however you'd like. And then after that, I'm just going to give all the seams a really nice steam and press, which is so satisfying. And then I decided that I wanted to top stitch all of these vertical seam lines. This is completely not necessary. I just thought it added a little bit of a design detail. So I chose to go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna move to the skirt. So I have my front piece and then I have my two back pieces. Find the notch on the center back seam and just keep that in mind because we're not going to be sewing the center back seam, we're going to be sewing the side seams. So sew both side seams and then after I sewed it, I just brought it over to my serger to finish that edge. Then of course I ended it with a nice press from my iron. Now that the bodice and the skirt are sewn together, it's time to connect them. So I just placed my skirt right sides together with the bodice at the waistline. And if you're not someone who likes to pin, I would definitely, definitely recommend pinning this because the skirt waistline loves to stretch out because of the points that it's at the bias. So just make sure that you pin the skirt to the bodice at the waistline, making sure that everything matches up because again, the skirt does like to stretch. Now just go ahead and repeat your same process of sewing the waistline, finishing the waistline, whether that be with a serger or with another method, and then finally pressing it. Now it's time for the invisible zipper. So I'm going to prep first by finishing the edges at the center back seam on both sides and both the bodice and the skirt. So I'm using a serger to do so. Next, I'm just going to find the notch at the center back seam of the skirt, and I'm just going to use a pin to make that notch a little bit more clear for me. Now I'm just going to pin my invisible zipper all the way down the center back seam, stopping at the notch, and then when I go to sew it, I'm also going to sew all the way down and stop at the notch. So now I'm just gonna share some little tips and tricks about how I sew an invisible zipper, which you guys have heard from me a bunch of times, but I'll tell you again. So I'm taking a pin and I'm marking on the other side of the zipper tape where I stopped sewing. And then I'm going to take another pin and I'm going to mark the zipper where 
the waistline is so that I'm able to match that up really well on the other side. Now I'm going to unzip my zipper, hold the zipper tape on the one side, and then flip it over once, and then pin it down. And I'm making sure to align this pin with the waistline, and I'm gonna make sure to align the other pin with the notch on the center back seam. And this will just make sure that when I sew this zipper down, that everything is going to match up absolutely perfectly. So I'm just going to pin it and sew it exactly how I did the other side. So you can see that everything matches up perfectly where I stopped sewing, also at the waistline, which is something that can be super noticeable if it's not done correctly. And then also when you take a look at the neckline, that is also matching up really well. And to finish off the seam, I'm just going to turn the dress inside out and then pin along the remainder of the dress. And then I'm just gonna use my zipper foot to get really close and sew with a half inch seam allowance. And then after you sew that, you can go ahead and trim off the excess zipper. Moving on to the neckline band, you should have two pieces cut. I'm gonna place them right sides together and sew along the sides and along the bottom. Do not sew along the top. And then after I've sewn it, I'm just going to trim down the seam allowance so it can be about a quarter of an inch. Then I'm also going to clip my corners and then I'm going to just turn it right side out and then give it a really good press. And I like to press the seam open so it can be a little bit cleaner first before pressing it into place. Moving on to the facing, I'm just gonna take my interfacing and just fuse it to the facing. Now I'm going to finish the facing along the sides and the back and again, I'm not going to finish the top. Now I'm going to be creating my spaghetti straps and there are two ways to do this. So the first way you can either sew it right sides together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I find that this works better with stretch fabrics. I find that's a little bit hard to do with woven fabric. So I'm going to opt for the second option, which is folding the spaghetti strap in quarters and then just top stitching it down. You can top stitch it along just the open edge or you could top stitch along both edges. I chose to just top stitch along the open edge. Next, it's time to sew the neckline. So I just unzip my dress to make it a little bit easier and lay it with the right side of the bodice facing up. And I kind of goofed this when I was filming it, so I decided to go ahead and make you guys some diagrams instead so you knew exactly what you were doing. So like I said, I'm starting with the right side of my bodice facing up. I then placed my neckline band right on top of that, and if you've done it right, there should be about a quarter inch of space between the center back seam of the bodice and the neckline band. Next, we add the straps. So there was a notch on your side back bodice pattern piece where the back strap should line up with. And then the front of the strap, you can just line up with the princess seam on the front. Lastly, just add the facing, and the facing should have the interfacing side up and the right side facing down. And this facing should also line up perfectly with the center back seam of the bodice. Now, we're ready to sew the neckline. And then I finished the neckline seam with my serger. Now to understitch, I have most of the dress on the left, the facing only on the right, and the seam allowance underneath pointed towards the facing. And I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam line, and this just helps prevent the facing from rolling out while you're wearing the garment. I also did not understitch in this one, one and a half inch area from the center back. This is because we need to now fold it right sides together and finish sewing the facing to the dress. So I'm just sewing it at the center back seam up that seam with about a quarter inch seam allowance. Then I just clip the corners before turning the facing to the other side and giving it a really good press so everything could lay nice and flat. Now I'm just gonna do some hand stitching. So I'm going to tack the facing down to the side seam on both sides and this just prevents it from rolling out. I'm also going to tack the neckline band at the corner at the center back seam so this doesn't move as well. Next, I'm gonna work on the hem. So I'm taking this horsehair braid that I love and that I've also linked down below because it is my favorite and is so inexpensive. I'm going to be stretching it just slightly as I sew it along the hem of the skirt with a quarter inch seam allowance. This is optional, but I'm taking this piece of ribbon and placing it between the skirt and the horsehair just to kind of protect your skin from the horsehair braid's raw edge because it kind of gets a little bit pokey. And I'm gonna sew that right there at the center back seam. 
Now I just sewed the ribbon at the center back seam with my sewing machine. Then I'm taking the horsehair braid and putting that also right at the center back seam. And I'm just going to stitch that again with quarter inch seam allowance, stretching it just slightly as I go around the hem. Now I'm just turning the hem under to the wrong side and I'm just giving that a good press with my iron because that makes it easier to sew later on. Now I'm just gonna finish the hem by sewing close to the inner edge of the horsehair braid. I also just wanna be transparent and let you guys know that most of the advice you find on the internet about horsehair braid is going to tell you not to stretch it at all because it can distort or bunch up and gather the skirt in weird ways. But I found that this way works really great for me. It looks good and it's super easy. I'm going to include some resources on the quote unquote correct way to sew horsehair braid in the description, which might include basting and gathering the horsehair braid and also sewing it by hand. This is honestly just one of those things that I find works really, really well for me. But anyways, after you finish your hem, you are done with your dress. Alright, so that's how you make this adorable summer dress. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you do recreate this look, be sure to send photos of me or tag me in the pictures on Instagram. If you tag me in the comments, it kind of gets lost in my notifications. So make sure you tag me in the actual photo. And there is a good chance that I'll repost you on my story and I'll definitely hype you up. I just love seeing what you guys create. Oh, and then also follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Kiana Bonolo. Especially if you guys want to be a part of design decisions and just seeing what else is going on in my sewing and fashion life oh also feel free to like this video if you enjoyed this tutorial it is the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free and yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video i'll see you next time bye